Um, as you know, masks are mechanical barriers. They are supposed to uh, protect or prevent flow of uh, air or uh, sputum or droplets from between individuals. Uh, in the ideal world, uh, masks would be uh, good, good preventive measures for COVID-19. However, this is, these are unprecedented times and uh, the massive, massive pandemic resulted in uh, massive consumption of all forms of uh, uh, masks from the world market. Particularly the N95, the professional masks are totally reserved for health professionals, uh, healthcare workers. So wearing them is not advised by any health authority. However, the agreed upon uh, consensus is that um, if you are sick, you definitely need to wear masks. There, there is no uh, question or argument there. If you are sick, you have to wear masks. However, if you are healthy, you definitely should not wear N95 uh, uh, masks, but it is advised to cover your mouth and nose with something. It can be a, a cloth mask, a paper-based mask, anything that you can cover your, your face in. Uh, the WHO still recommends healthy people should not wear masks. However, the CDC has recently announced that everyone should wear masks. So, in short, they are beneficial, but because of the massive pandemic, uh, N95 and uh, other professional masks are reserved for healthcare providers, whereas uh, the public, the healthy people, are advised to wear uh, scarves, uh, face covers, and uh, uh, cloth-based based, uh, masks. Uh, countries should completely uh, shut down their borders so that they don't import uh, the, uh, the virus and diseased uh, people. Uh, the, the, the population should, should experience uh, social distancing. Everyone should stay at home. Uh, public gatherings, uh, congregations, schools should be shut down until the natural course of the disease, which is about three, four weeks, is uh, over. Uh, the population should also experience uh, the basic and very important ways of, uh, of blocking transmission. That's wash your hands with uh, uh, hand, uh, soap and water. If the resources are available, you can also use alcohol-based hand sanitizers, uh, but stay at home. Uh, well, in my opinion, uh, I'm afraid most African countries cannot sustain uh, the huge burden of the disease. If things go really out of hand, and if we start seeing this influx of patients to healthcare facilities, my suspicion is most health systems in the continent will completely collapse. Let alone developing countries like Africa, uh, the well-developed nations like the US, the U Europe, China really, really struggled and they had lots and lots of mortality. If you had studied the case fatality rate in the US since the past three weeks, case fatality rate, uh, as when I remember, was about 2.1%. Now it has risen to around 4.6%. At the beginning of the pandemic, very few people were dying. Now that there are uh, more than 600,000 patients, the healthcare system is being overwhelmed, more the patients are start starting to die. So even developed countries are struggling. Uh, Africa's healthcare system is plagued with uh, existing uh, diseases like Ebola, malaria, TB, HIV, massive numbers of surgical patients, massive number of uh, cancer patients. If you add the COVID pandemic on top of that, this health systems will definitely will definitely uh, crush. Now, uh, COVID is also is, is not just a health uh, crisis. It's a political crisis. It's a national na national security crisis. It's an economic crisis. Uh, countries are advising their their people to stay at home, but. Uh, uh, 80 to 90% of the African population depends on daily wages. 
from uh, hand to mouth kind of living situation what are these people going to eat well, how are they going to take care of sustain uh, live uh, sustain their life until the shutdown is over Uh, there, there is a report from the US that a tiger uh, caught the virus. There are reports that dogs and cats uh, also uh, caught the virus uh, about two weeks ago. So this is proven. However, do animals develop the disease? That is not yet proven. And do animals transmit the disease back to humans? That is not yet proven. But my guess is within the coming few weeks, few days, this data will come out. If uh, you feel these symptoms, the first thing you need to do is isolate yourself. Isolate yourself and call for help. If you are in Rwanda, there is a, a dedicated hotline that you automatically have to call and uh, people from uh, the Rwandan Biomedical Center will uh, automatically come and uh, support you all the way. You'll get tested, uh, you'll be supported on, uh, along the way until you are declared cured. And where, whichever country you are, I am aware that there are also hotlines that you have to uh, uh, call and get, get help. Uh, but automatically isolate yourself and uh, uh, re uh, reach for help. And in the meantime, try to think about your contacts because the second most important thing in uh, tackling epidemics is contact tracing. Uh, people who are in close contact with you have a high chance of developing the disease. So you need to uh, help the authorities in uh, tracing uh, uh, your, your contacts. This is a, a, a very sad story, the world we're living in now, the extreme inequity, the extreme uh, uh, the difference in healthcare system among nations of the world. Uh, a typical example is the number of ventilators in, in uh, these African countries. I'm aware that uh, Ethiopia, for about 110 people, have uh, close to 600 ventilators. Rwanda is around 200. Ghana is around 300. And uh, if uh, the data we have about uh, Central African Republic is true, they have a handful of uh, ventilators. I hope it's uh, incorrect. I hope it's wrong. Now, the worst side of the story is that these are ventilators that probably are occupied by other patients. There are uh, this routine patients like road traffic accidents, post-operative patients, strokes, uh, airway injuries, severe pneumonias that are already using these ventilators. So even if uh, you hear numbers coming out of Africa, these are ventilators already being used. It's a very sad, very sad story. So what I think African countries need to do now is be wise about it and uh, start sharing their resources. Uh, which among the countries is now suffering the most? So then uh, the countries need to learn to work together, share resources, share, share human resources, and, uh, and uh, uh, at least live through this catastrophe. Uh, we are seeing some fantastic global partnerships. Uh, China is uh, sharing whatever it has to Africa, testing kits, PPEs, ventilators. And yesterday I heard uh, healthcare providers from China are landing in Africa to support uh, in healthcare. Uh, South Korea is also doing that. Uh, WHO is extensively supporting African countries. Uh, so that is how I think these poor African countries with very limited resources can survive 